July the 13th, 2021. Guys, you're looking at images back from the 9th up until today of our sun. This is uh, from Velasco C2 images. The sun is actually the size of the white ring that you see. The red uh, circle is actually an occult or disc, so that, and it blinds out the bright sun so that you can see the activity around it. But it's been one explosion after the other. Going back to the night, there's two on that day, and then we back out and look at the same satellite, but a different camera called Lasco C3. Same thing's happening, explosion after explosion. We're coming out of the bottom of solar cycle 24. We're into solar cycle 25. And to be honest with you, uh, I've watched this a long time. And this is some of the most rapid uh, fire explosions that I've seen in a row, even during solar maximum. And uh, you're looking at the sun here. There's a filament that's coming around the top left corner of this, if you look there. And uh, it's... Uh, you can see it here. We'll look at a different filter, but it's next to a sunspot. And when that happens, these long rope-like filaments can release from one side and whip out towards whatever direction that, that the sun is facing at that point. Towards, and if it's facing us, it will come out towards Earth. Here's what I'm talking about. You can see it a little closer. There's actually two, these dark filament lines, and they are prominences above the surface of the sun. And notice the proximity to the sunspot right there. And you can see very closely the explosions that are in that. What happens if when one of these filaments, again, these dark lines, they touch an arcing um, situation like a sunspot, then that will cause that filament to release. You guys that have watched this channel for a long time knows those know that those can be the most dangerous uh coronal mass ejections. Here it is. You can see the sunspot. It's got uh, beta and gamma magnetic configurations here, and that's right where that filament is, sunspot 2842. Now, most of the explosions that you just looked at, which were multiple in the beginning of the video, were backside. All of that is starting to turn back around towards the Earth, so in the next two to three weeks, we're going to see a lot of activity here. Again, here's the sunspot that's next to that filament. That's two key ingredients of what it takes to create a filament release. Now, yesterday I did a video talking about the solar wind jumping up to 600 kilometers per second, over a million miles an hour. It has not happened yet. Some of the uh, sites that we look at have backed that up till today. I, that would be more than likely because of uh, it's hard to determine what we would call the muzzle velocity when something leaves the surface of the sun we may not get to measure it until it passes a couple satellites and then you get kind of a a uh, idea of the speed but if you get, look at this this goes back to yesterday july the 12th on monday it says today a high speed stream of solar wind is expected to hit earth's magnetic field that's what i was reporting on yesterday again it hasn't happened Wind speeds could top 600 kilometers per second, sparking minor geomagnetic storms and high latitude auroras. Now, this is flowing from an equatorial hole in the sun's atmosphere. We talked about that. And let's go to today, and you can see they have updated this. This is spaceweather.com, one of the better sites. It's always been linked on our website, bpearthwatch.com. But NOAA forecasters say there's a chance of G1-class geomagnetic storms today july 13th when earth enters a fast moving stream of solar wind again they have just came in and said today uh, after saying it was going to happen yesterday but it happens quite often simply because muzzle velocity is not known till it gets closer to earth and earth satellites and i think that's the cause of the delay we'll see how it affects it sometimes they just miss it all together but here's something that's important it's called cosmic rays in the atmosphere and it happens uh, when we have these solar events and every time most of you in the comments that are affected by this will come in and say headaches dizziness aches and pains vertigo multitudes of uh, problems when these things occur now space weather uh, they once a week they fly these space weather balloons up above california and this line that you're seeing here is solar cycle 24 notice right there in the red starts in 2014 
And this is the percentage of increase in this uh, cosmic rays that are penetrating in the since 2014. 15% increase. That's pretty fast, guys, uh, looking at what's happening. Now that solar minimum is over, you're seeing this chart going to solar cycle 25. Now there's been a 2% decrease in cosmic rays. Why? Because as we increase into solar cycle 25, more influence from the sun strengthens it strengthens our uh, shields, guys. So we still had a 13% increase if you take away that 2%, but now this should go down some. It may not go back down to where it was here in 2014 because we are dealing with grand solar minimum. But again, 15% increase since 2014 in the this uh, cosmic radiation. Now, solar cycle 24, uh, excuse me, 25 is beginning. Sun is energizing our shields because of that's how it works. When the sun is weak, our shields are weak. When it's strong, our shields are strong. Again, we're probably around 13% increase, though. And you can tell it with your garden, drought, heat, uh, sunburn, the entire nine yards there. But again, 2% decrease. Increase. Why? Because our shields are starting to get stronger. Will they get as strong as they did in solar cycle 24? I doubt it. But here's what's important. Cosmic ray doses peaked in late 2019 and have been slowly declining ever since. Makes perfect sense. Solar minimum was in late 2019. During solar minimum, the sun's magnetic field weakens, allowing more cosmic rays into the solar system. We talked about it for years. We expect dose rate to be highest at that time now that solar minimum has passed the sun is waking up again solar magnetic fields are strengthening providing a stiffer barrier to cosmic rays trying to enter the solar system the decline of cosmic radiation above california is a sign that new solar cycle 25 is gaining strength now here's why i really wanted to do the video we talk about people getting dizzy headaches aches and pains there's studies that go that have come out about this. This one is coming out of Israel, and they're linked, uh, and I will link this particular study. Uh, it's uh, from the Rabin Medical Center in Tel Aviv University from 2003 to 2005. It says, part of results of collaborative studies for revealing an influence of the periodical cha uh, changes of solar, geomagnetic, our shields, and cosmic ray activities on the sudden cardiac death mortality called SCD is described in this paper. The data covering daily and monthly temporal distribution of uh, the sudden cardiac death, 788 patients in 36 months between 2003 and 2005, says taken from all of uh, emergency and first medical aid stations of Grand Baku area. Now, sudden cardiac death, guys, is defined by you're starting to have problems, feeling chest pains or whatever, and within one hour, you're no longer with us. That's called SCD. you got one hour kind of in that time period. Again, it says these are um, all of emergency and first aid medical stations of Grand Baku area were analyzed and compared with certain, listen to this t uh, term, very cool, cosmophysical perimeters. It was obtained that SCD is higher on the highest and lowest daily levels of geomagnetic magnetic activity. Pay attention to that. When it's the when it's peaking, so does SCD. When it drops very low, so uh, SCD still increases because when it's averaging, everything's kind of normal. But when you see these drops and these rises then it starts to affect us. Why? Because we are tied in to the electrogeomagnetic activity of the entire solar system. It says it was um, that uh, days with SCD are accompanied by high cosmic ray neutron activity. The mo monthly number of SCDs, or sudden cardiac death, was inversely related to solar and geomagnetic activities, while uh, it was positively linked with cosmic ray activity levels. It was concluded that cosmic ray activity can be considered as one of the regulating external environmental factors in the human homeostasis. Just a study, it's a lot of technical crap in here guys, but it goes to show you that 
the sun, the solar changes, this uh, geomagnetic cosmic ray activity affects you. It's not in your mind. These studies have been going on a long time. But let me say this about Malachi. I think it's chapter 4. Maybe wrong, but it's only four chapters in Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament. It talks about Shemesh, and that is the sun, not the Son of God, but the sun that we're talking about right here, and how it will spread its healing wings. Well, sometimes it's not healing, and uh, sometimes there's even interference due to uh, technology or other events like that. But uh, again, God says in the end times, I will spread those healing wings of Shemesh, or Shemesh will spread its healing wings onto mankind. And I thought, you know, over the years we talked about it, about that being, say you're so wrapped up, the, or the electrical grid, the, the satellite grids, and the web of the whole thing, the, the uh, net of it, web and nets, if you think about the World Wide Web or an internet, both are traps, right? Spiders fish net web and with uh, what we're seeing with the must satellites uh, starlink and then neuralink there could possibly be a tremendous amount of in, uh, interference that's going to increase we're already seeing it from um, these uh, cell phone towers and cell phones themselves and modems and electromagnetic interference but um, if you have a sudden angel pouring out a vial upon the sun then uh, all of these satellites this electromagnetic interference will be taken down will be a grid down situation and uh, that may be when those healing wings of Shemesh are allowed through this neuro net sat net that's being built and uh, start healing some of these problems that we're having guys because, again, they're, they're looking at the cosmic ray activity. A lot of you guys will come in and come in about you're feeling it. You can feel the pressure. I can tell the vertigo sometimes, the dizziness. But uh, it's not just that. It can go as far as sudden cardiac death. And they're showing that it is much worse as you get older. The younger people suffer a lot less from it, which makes perfect sense. But if you're feeling rough, then during these events, don't think it's in your head, guys. I just wanted to point this out again. Go to, to our website. Scroll down on the left to spaceweather.com. Scroll down that page and look at the effects of this cosmic radiation. It actually links to a couple of these articles. And this particular article is several pages on a PDF. And I will link to it in the uh, description below. But guys, again, uh, solar activity is picking up. Our shield should strengthen somewhat, and they're going to need to be if we continue to see the explosions that we're seeing now. All of that's going to be earth turning. You've got about 14 days on either side of the sun as these things rotate. But we're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up, guys. Be safe.